This Final Cut Pro 10 Tour presentation is brought to you by the LumaForge Share Station, the world's best storage for Final Cut 10. For more information on how the Share Station can improve your workflow, head on over to LumaForge.com. Hi, I'm Rory. <laughs> Uh, from Soho Editors in London. We're a training and talent uh, agency for post-production freelancers. So we've got 300 audio uh, operators on the books uh, and we supply to all the best uh, post houses, TV stations, production companies, uh, that talent. I'm also a trainer on Resolve and I will be working on a system obviously fed by the Jellyfish awesome shared storage solution that's critical to part of this collaborative workflow you've got to have media going to both seats uh, for that to work properly um, now i guess the utopia of, of of being able to work on two seats on the same timeline at the same time it kind of takes a little bit of time to get your head around really because you know Round tripping is the bane of my life, to be honest, that to a certain extent, there's always a process of checking. There's always a process of making sure that something hasn't fallen apart in that workflow, especially when you're a colorist and you turn up and you haven't been involved in that creative process at the beginning, you're suddenly kind of, you, you can't not check what's going on. So there's my uh, timeline. I'm just gonna go to here, switch to, my rushes and go to sunset and then switch to i'm just going to leave them like that so that i'll go to this and i'll just make a little edit up so if i've got a marked edit in and out timeline patch bay as per familiar if i do f10 it'll do an overwrite edit into the timeline let's just zoom in so there's my first shot maybe there i'll mark in mark out pick up another shot Maybe mark some, let's find him. Oh yeah, I'll have that bit. Mark in, play down, mark out, F10, uh, and so on. So maybe I go, I want to actually have that frame at that point in time. I can do a shortcut for it. I can do a replace edit. Um, if I went here and went, I want another shot at this point in the timeline, mark in, mark out. Let's say I want this bit here. Well, we've got a duration problem. I'll do a fit to fill. All of the things that you're used to seeing in an edit in context. If I want to, I can go to my inspector, go down and choose to use optical flow to do the process on that. Obviously, you get your warpy warpness. Some things work with that, some things don't. So that's my editor. I'm going to jump into a sequence that I've prepared earlier and we'll just have a look at it uh, without the the grade, I've kind of kept this front sequence clean. I've got my grades here. Uh, but if I jump in here and do Shift D, I'll just disable the, the grade so you can see, see the, uh, the grade play through. So this is the edit. If somebody actually sat down and described to me a bicycle before they'd ever been invented, I probably would be a naysayer. I'd they like, oh, you can't balance on two wheels like that. That'll never work. I like the challenge. I like to try to fix bicycles that other bike shops can't fix, won't fix, refuse to fix because of some sort of policy reason. They don't have the tool or the bike's just too old. I was a big fan of Orson Welles. I had done several projects on him uh, going through school and stuff like that. So I appreciated the pun and the play on the word of uh, Citizen Kane, Citizen Chain. Uh, and then only after we named the shop uh, by certain course of events, we found out that Rosebud was really a bicycle. Uh, the inspiration for Rosebud as a sled was a bicycle that the screenwriter had as a child. So that's the scene that I cut. It took about an hour, hour and a half, direct in Resolve. Um, to, to get that edit together. Um, I've color coded it to make sense of it. If I just go back in there and turn off that shift D, so I'm enabling the grades. I basically have got um, a sequence to go. Now I want to collaborate with my grader in the other room. 
who's working with the clients as well. If you're doing fast turnaround work, this is the, you know, a, a, a complete lifesaver. There's so many times people don't lock the edit anymore. Uh, and as a colorist, you get that reconform line timeline. You've got to rematch. Your, you've got to color trace your grades to get them to move around. That's a thing of the past if you adopt this system. So if I um, have got that now, what I need to do is it change hats. So now here I am, the colorist, um, and I'm going to. You basically, you've got a concept of owner and colorist. You can have more than one collaborator as well. So I could have an assistant metadataing files. I could have an assistant playing out approval masters, whilst I'm getting on with grading and editing at exactly the same timeline, at exactly the same time on the same timeline. The first thing I have to do is in the second seat as a colorist is open as a collaborator. So now I'm opening that project, the same one that I've got there, running from an SQL server database that's feeding both systems and seeing the same, same storage from the jellyfish. So there I am, I'm in the timeline. If I go in here, there's where I was in the project. If I now come in here and go save as a collaborator, I'm saving that change. Now in here, if I go um, to the, the bell and go reload that as a collaborator, and publish those changes that have come through and there you go so there's my timeline updated live into this project yeah so i said that i hadn't graded the front sequence so let's do that if i go in as a colorist uh, you are seeing the right one yeah that's brilliant if i go in here uh, here's some grades i made earlier for this sequence so i can transfer those grades across i'll just very quickly bang on ones I made earlier. You don't want to see paint dry. So let's go through here. I just pick this up, um, go through to here. There was a problem with um, certain shots. Um, so if I've, one of the beauties of Resolve is that say, for example, I've got this setup. If I go to display node graph, I've got all of the elements from that grade available for me to cherry pick, to put through uh, to the next shot and to the next shot and so on. So for example, here we've got a problem if I play through where we've got obviously a discontinuity in the grade. So I'll just bang on that grade. And you know, I could be quite easily if I just display my scopes, there's my scopes. Uh, and I should be able to just come in here and use the great tool set within Resolve uh, to just get that to fit and match a little bit more, maybe boost the, the mid-tones uh, and get that going on. I could even step back here and go, well, that's the color I want. I'll copy that, bring that through, add another node, and then copy that grade into the chain and maybe just change the way that it's keying through. So very quickly, I can get my grade through to match and to finish this edit. Uh, I'll just take that one, nick the one I made earlier, and nick the one I made earlier. So now I want to send that back to my editor who's got the creative director and the creative team in the agency all hovering around him, being emotional about it. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, so we're going we're gonna to go and publish all those changes back. So they go back in here and now I get a little uh, message saying I've got some changes to adopt. Let's update all of those clips in the timeline and there's my grade coming into the timeline every time I save my project as an owner, I'm sending changes back downstream. That's, a, that's the work of genius of the workflow between these two seats. Now, the poor editors getting changes. So they're getting that, right, I know, I need some more shots in the timeline. So I've, I've put some markers here. Those markers, by the way, could be things like, you know, reinvent your, your edit, it's rubbish. Or it could be things like, could you make that shot look nice? Yeah, or sort out that balance between the two elements. So if we go in here, I've got a couple of shots I made earlier, dragging them initially from the timeline. So there's a shot I've marked up. I've positioned, I've patched the two. I don't want the audio from it. I'll just do an F10 with that. So there's my shot. I'll go into that. And then I've got another marker down here where I've got so Citizen Kane, Citizen Chain. So I'm going to use this element and do an F10 with that as, oh, hold on. 
Uh, uh, <clears throat> yeah, I'm hitting the wrong button. There we go. See? Genius. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's always good when your editor and your colorist can see. Um, so, uh, you know, so there you go. There's a shot. If actually I take off the uh, reset that grade, because uh, that's still got the grade on it. So here we are. There's the shot. Um, and basically now I want to send those changes back. Actually, before I do, I'm going to do one more thing here. I'm going to patch to V3, mark to the duration of that shot, um, and uh, let's put a logo in. So I'll put that in and go F10 and edit the logo in. Do X again to mark the duration of the shot. A title I made earlier on your bike, which was uh, a favorite saying of mine. So there you go, I've put some graphics and stuff like that in as well. Um, so now I'm just gonna save that. I'm gonna come back into my other hat as a colorist. <laughs> I was gonna actually get the hat. Um, and I'll just reload that as a collaborator. Um, and if I go back into the timeline now, there's all those elements straight into the timeline. I'm capable of cracking on. Couldn't there be conflicts? I mean, if there are conflicts, you've got the ability to revert at any time or selectively change your decision making. The owner makes those calls, but I can actually swap who the owner is. So I can reload uh, as an owner or as a collaborator. So yeah. I mean, it's a it's a complex world in a way, but it's as made as simple as possible. So I could now go right. Well, as a colorist, I'm going to add a vignette. So I'm just going to tick to make a, a standard vignette there. I want to make sure that everybody's looking at my uh, big name and graphic. So I'll, I'll invert that and maybe push in a defocus around that uh, for that element. And I'll clearly need that again on this shot which I've just edited in so I'll add that back in over there so I want to send that back to my man for approval oh yeah now let's do something else as well um, actually what I'll do is I'll nick the grade that I did on this one let's have a look so if I switch to the key oh I can see I probably need to do another key to get that to be slightly more refined and maybe I want to do a, a mask to make sure if we're looking at the key that I'm not getting that color spilling on on his top so I'm just going to go there I'll invert that mask so I'm cleaning that up I'll do command T the awesome tracker alt T to track backwards and I've just cleaned that up so I'm happy with the changes um, now I need my uh, vignette so I'll just go bang and that's now fixed that um, so I'm oh, happy with that. I can save at any point as a collaborator and I can publish all those changes back to my seat over here. As an editor, I'm now looking at that and going update all clips from those changes. And there's my vignette and mask and my new grade back in the context of the timeline with my new shots in it, etc., etc. Pretty, pretty good. Now, maybe... Um, the client goes, yeah, I like that, but I want to change my mind again. So, <laughs> you know, so now they want to move around sequences and stuff like that. Quite often it's the context of the sequence. Maybe they go, actually the sunset should be later on as a sequence and we're really starting at the wrong point. Why would you start with a sunset? Um, now at any point I can select clips on any track, alt down arrow to push them into the timeline. Maybe I want this sequence to be in front of this. So if I hold down Alt and Command, I can just drag to reposition that sequence um, to get that to work. Now I save. Now back in the color correcting area, I can see it once I say, let's reload that as a collaboration, it's now going to move that sequence around. Fluid, fluid exchange of information. You think about the round tripping a conundrum and the reprocessing of that checking part that you don't have to face anymore. Clearly, I've lost my vignettes that were down here. So as a colorist, I would go in and go, well, I want to copy that. I want to delete that grade off of that. 
delete that grade off of that because I now want them to be solid and I'll just go back up to uh, where we were and uh, add a node and pump that in um, and maybe add a node and pump that in. There we go, nice. So might want to maybe trim those back as well. So I'll just do an ex uh, drag that in and do that and we're good to go. So moving through from one to the other, I've got, of course, I've now got to publish those changes. It could be, as I say, just pu publishing one or many or some and allowing me to revert all of those changes or just the selected ones that I'm going, you can try again, idiot, I'm chastising myself. So I could do all of that, but I'll just say up, update all changes and now that's back in the timeline as I want it. I actually... Um, preferred it the other way but let's not carry on this process you can get the idea you can see what's going on um, now at a certain point the client could go well I'm really liking what I'm seeing there but I want to add a bit more so I can step up step up to the timeline here open up um, uh, a node and maybe take advantage of all the third-party plugins that we've got well not third-party plugins these are resolve effects they're built in I'm just going to drop on the film grain thing. I'm going to go to Super 8. I'm going to up the grain strength. Uh, I might insert, insert a node before that, go to my color area, switch to color boost, and let's go for something that looks sort of Super 80 and grainy. So if I press play on that, we're now getting this. And this is quite impressive because this is two tiers of grades going through with lots of nodes and color corrections, technical grades effects grades playing back um, from r the jellyfish kind of almost in real time just like you know it's very very powerful and clearly can be configured to deal with what you want to do with it as I say simplicity is everything to me uh, and confidence that I've got exactly what was left creatively at the editing but that whole fluidity to be able and not have to lock and still know that you're running on both systems at the same time. You could have as many collaborators as you want. One could be laying in mats ready for the grader to get to, to look good in front of all those clients. It's already tracked, it's already set up for them to use um, uh, or for the editor to show them the shot. It's running ahead of time, there's three graders on the same job. Whatever combination, the whole potential is enormous. So you've got that as i say if you've got any questions so heard it as we're based in london but we can come to you i can do training on site um, of resolve as a tool set or any of the other toys um, uh, and but thank you very much give a, ha give a hand to uh, rory thank you very much rory this was an amazing demo <laughs>